Hey, what's up guys? It is Rob. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to talk about Top Gun Maverick, which is a 2022 American action drama film directed by Joseph Kaczynski, who also did Oblivion, which had Tom Cruise in it, as well as Only the Brave, which had Miles Teller. Now, this is a direct sequel to the 1986 classic Top Gun. Now, those of you who haven't seen Top Gun, you're missing out. It's definitely one of my favorite Tom Cruise films, and it is well known to be up there in some of the best movies ever made. The film stars Tom Cruise as Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell, reprising his role from the original, along with Val Kilmer. Now, Val Kilmer, he does have an interesting part in the movie. I'm not going to give it away, but I will say it is more than a cameo, and the scene really hits hard. At least for me it did, because it was good to see him back. I mean, you got to think, this is set 36 years after the first film. You also have Miles Teller, who plays Goose's son from the original. You know, in the uh, first movie, Goose dies, and it was a very tragic accident. But Miles Teller plays his son, and his name is Rooster. That's what they call him. That's his, um, you know, pilot name. And I got to say, he looks exactly like Goose, or Anthony Edwards, so to say. He has the mustache. He has kind of like the spiked hair a little bit. He looks exactly like him, and he's kind of taller than Tom Cruise, so it really fits. Um, I loved his story. And again, you know, this is basically Maverick's return to the, you know, United States Navy Strike Fighter Tactics Instructor Program, also known as Top Gun. He must confront his past as he trains a group of younger fighter pilots. Among them is, of course, Rooster, who is the son of the deceased best friend, Goose. I freaking love the story. Like I said, that whole story was fantastic. I loved how, you know, all these years, Maverick still hasn't really gotten over what happened to Goose because, you know, he tried to eject out of the plane and he, you know, when the seat shot off, it got caught in the the window part and he broke his neck. And of course, Maverick is taking responsibility for it. And after all these years, he's still dealing with that. I mean, there are times in this movie where he's like, talk to me, Goose. Talk to me, Goose. You know, that's what he says in the first movie. And he's still saying it here. Um, but they did a very good job on trying to connect the dots, uh, making this feel relevant, making this feel like an actual sequel to the first movie. I mean, it just feels so smooth and thought out. I mean, it is this movie is epic, guys. I am telling you, it is fantastic. The development of this sequel was announced in 2010. And by 2012, a draft of the screenplay was finished. But then we had Tony Scott, who, you know, died by suicide, and the film's, uh, you know, pre-production was put on hold. But the film is dedicated to Scott's memory. I mean, he was fantastic, uh, you know, for, you know, what he did. Um, Tony Scott will never be forgotten. Uh, he was awesome. But then Kaczynski was hired, and a new draft of the script was written, but because of COVID, this movie was delayed. And, you know, honestly, <laughs> I will say it was worth the wait. This movie has fantastic visuals. It has fantastic acting. It has fantastic music. And the action scenes, the dog fights were amazing. I cannot even stress that enough, guys. It was... This movie, I was not expecting it to be this good. It has a running time of 131 minutes and a budget of $170 million. And you have music by Harold Faltemeyer, who did, uh, you know, the music for, like, Tango and Cash. Um, Lady Gaga also has a song on here. Hans Zimmer, who is, <laughs> I don't even really need to, you know, say anything more about Hans Zimmer, how good he is. But yeah, this this movie, like I said, it just connects everything. 
Now, Jennifer Connelly's character was really good. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it, you know, being in a relationship with Maverick and kind of on and off thing. That's how they kind of touch on it in this movie. But it worked because, you know, the original love interest was Kelly McGillis. And though she's kind of like stepped down from acting, she doesn't really do it anymore. And she actually looks really different now. It's She's actually unrecognizable. But... They don't really go into any kind of detail with her. And I was actually surprised because at the end of the first movie, it kind of leaves you wondering what happens between the, the couple. And so I'm just, you know, I'm left wondering, like, after all these years, you know, they didn't even really touch on that. But I suppose that was just a way to kind of overshadow it, you know, bringing Jennifer in. And having that kind of, um, you know, relationship or romantic thing. Now, Meg Ryan, um, I wasn't sure how they were going to do that. They do show pictures of her, but she's not in the movie. And they do explain it. Because I'm thinking to myself, like, what about Meg Ryan? Like, why would they not have her come back? But, yeah, they explain it. Um, there's a scene that happens that you got to listen to, uh, you know, I think Maverick is actually talking, so they do explain her role, but other than that, you know, the whole cast was fantastic. They all did their jobs, um, excellent acting when they're in the planes. This is the interesting thing though. Tom Cruise designed a unique boot camp for the actors, going through three months of training. So you had underwater evacuation, you had aerial aviation, and the preliminary training to build awareness inside the aircraft and flights. And the actors also had to learn how to run the cameras because... When they're up in the jet, they have to direct themselves, essentially. They also needed to be taught about lighting, cinematography, and editing. So, you know, all the stunts and all that stuff were done in the planes. There was no, like, CG. If there was any CG, it really wasn't noticeable at all. Because whenever the planes were flying, I, you know, it, it, it looked so real. It just looked so good. I mean, the cameras were mounted all over the exteriors of the aircraft. And they wanted the audience to feel... The strain and the speed and the gravitational forces. Um, and that's something that cannot be achieved through soundstage or visual effects, but it needed to be it needed to be sorted out to where you could make it work that way. And especially if you're sitting in a theater, like an IMAX theater, and the sound is so loud and it's shaking and like you're vibrating in the seat and stuff. That's what they wanted to do. That is what they wanted you to feel while you're watching these, these jets go head to head. More than 800 hours of footage was shot for the film. Exceeding the combined footage shot for the films of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That is crazy. Oh my god. This movie has a lot of twists and turns as well, where you think something's going to happen and something else happens. Um, it does leave you on the edge of your seat in some scenes, and biting your nails, wondering what's going to happen. I loved it. Every single moment. So far, I can say this. Top Gun Maverick is my favorite movie of the year. That's right. Um, the Batman was my favorite movie of the year but this is just a little bit higher than that i mean i freaking love the batman the batman was so good this is just a little bit higher not by much but just a little bit higher so it'll be interesting by the end of the year where i'm going to place you know, some of these movies, you know, as far as like maybe my top 10 or something like that. But so far, Top Gun Maverick is definitely my favorite. So what did you guys think of Top Gun Maverick? You know, I don't want to give anything away. I don't want to talk about certain uh, scenes and things like that. I just wanted to give you guys a general idea. And um, yeah, it was fantastic. Go support this movie. Go see it. Um it is amazing. So that is my review of Top Gun Maverick. And um, I'll be back with more reviews coming up soon. Thanks for watching.